What's up guys? How's it going? It is Matt here. So we're going to be talking about something that I actually kind of found kind of funny this weekend. Um, about the double-edged sword of the 1911. Alright, the double-edged sword of the 1911. So this is another 1911 video, so all you uh, 1911 guys will probably get a kick out of this. The Glock guys will be like, <laughs> oh, whatever. So I'm going to do a little fun video, guys. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about what, I, what I, a little lesson that I learned this weekend when it comes to uh, shooting. My personal shooting is when it comes to it. So this weekend I had a class. I, I had a class with a good, you know, a few, it's a small class, only a few students. I had three students in the class. It was a good class. Um, most of them had no, little to no experience whatsoever when it came to actual pistol. So what I do in the class is I teach them the basics of how to handle it, how to manipulate it, firearm safety and stuff like that. And then at the end of the class, well, towards the end of the class, I teach them with the grip on the laser system we have set up. And then I take them out to the range and we actually get them qualified on the range. So I give them some practice rounds and I get to qualify. So they qualified in my Glock 19. Good gun, 9mm. They can handle it. New shooters can handle 9mm very well. So for me, it was a little bit of a pride moment and an embarrassing moment at the same time. So these students, all right, the great students, they went from not even knowing how to hold a gun properly to qualifying with insanely awesome groups within about 30 minutes of me giving them each 10 rounds of practice and actually doing a qualification. Within 30 minutes, they freaking nailed it out of the park and freaking qualified, just awesome qualifi qualification groups with the Glock 19. Now. It was kind of crazy because the second we, you know, the class ends that quickly, when the class ends that quickly, it gives us a little bit more time because I had like an hour before I have to get back to the shop and finish out their paperwork and stuff like that. So that's when I usually pull out different guns and let them get a feel for stuff like that. So I carry my 1911. Most of the time I carry my 1911. Last week I had like a clock week, whatever. But most of the time I'm carrying my 1911, just like right now. I'm carrying my 1911s. They're good guns. I love my 1911s. I love the 1911s. So... The thing that I was a little embarrassed at is they shot the, these three three guys that or these three t students two two guys one girl who had rarely to never shot a gun before outshot me on my own Glock, outshot me on my own Glock, embarrassing as hell. However, as an instructor, I was kind of proud of it because you know I taught them how to outshoot me. Yeah, awesome. But when it came to the 1911, I just nailed it out of the park. 100% we were shooting. Nailed it out of the park. They tried the 1911 and they were doing pretty damn good with it. So me, when it came to the 1911, I'm on target, hitting it and nailing it out of the park. I think, I, I said I have a, I'll say I had an 80% hit ratio. Okay, so 80% hit ratio. So I'll give, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm saying about 80% hit ratio. So after, out of every 10 rounds, I maybe missed two and there are a bunch of small little steel targets that we had set up and I had it set up at various distances and stuff like that. So, for me, it, as an instructor, it was kind of a proud moment and an embarrassing moment at the same time, knowing that these students have never really shot a pistol a day in their life. You know, me being able to get them qualified that quickly, you know, it's teaching them from no, not even knowing how to hold a pistol properly to being able to hold a pistol properly and hold groups like that big on targets that are about that big. They're grouping about that big on targets that are about that big. That for me is a major pride moment. However, the second I picked up my Glock and I was, I was shooting it with them too, I just wasn't hitting very well my Glock. I just wasn't. Um, I don't know if I uh, what I was doing wrong. You know, I'd probably I'm probably gonna hang in another instructor look at me and say, dude, what am I doing wrong with my Glock? But I was like, what the hell am I doing? I'm missing with my Glock. And a couple times, like, I gotta redeem myself. And the students were like laughing. However, I go back to my 1911 and ting, 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 ting. I'm hitting targets like crazy. Now. Well, I say the 1911 guys are going to kind of laugh at this and kind of snicker at it a little bit where the Glock people are like, hoo, 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 hoo. it's, it's, it's kind of like this. This is why the 1911 guys are going to kind of laugh a little bit here. They're going to have a little bit of fun with it. The 1911 is pretty much a double-edged sword. Now, what I mean by that is 1911s, okay, especially when you get to the five-inch models, they have this awesome sight picture, sight radius. They are one of the most naturally pointing guns that you'll ever shoot. They are nail drivers. Every single 1911 I've shot, regardless of make and model, is an absolute nail driver. They have these beautiful sights, they have a beautiful alignment, they have beautiful balance, and when you squeeze the trigger, especially like this one right here, if you take a look, this one is an adjustable trigger, all right? So I have it adjusted just to how I like it, where there's almost no take up, there's a tiny bit of take up, and then it's just a crisp, clean, snap, beautiful break. And then the second I shoot it, every time I point it, whatever I'm pointing at, I hit the target. Bang, bang. Every single time I pretty much shoot this, I hit the target. Now, like I said, I had an 80% 80, 80 
mitt hit ratio this weekend, which is pretty damn good. So I'm not a super shooter. I'm just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a decent shooter. I'm not a super shooter, but I'm a decent shooter. So 80% for me is pretty badass. For me personally, I think that's pretty badass. But it's kind of funny because you get so used to the sweet triggers of this. You get so used to the balance of this, the weight of it, the way how it points, the way how it shoots, the nail drivers. You almost get a little spoiled with it. You almost get a little spoiled with the 1911. You know, a lot of people complain all the time about 1911, they do malfunction. Yeah, they malfunction. It's it's not a Glock. It's not something like that. It requires a bit more tender love and care. We'll say that. It requires more tender love and care. It requires more to get into the actual gun. You have to take care of it more. And yes, it does malfunction every now and then. However, when I was out there, I had one malfunction with this, and they also had one malfunction with Glock 19, so throwing that out there. It actually put more rounds through this than we did with the Glock 19. Just throwing that one out there. But however, is the 1911 people, when they've been carrying for a long time and they shoot them a lot, it almost spoils you. You know, yes, it is a unique system that you gotta get used to. You get used to the safeties, the angles, and the way how it sits, the way how it shoots. However, once you get used to it, once you start shooting it, you, a lot of 1911 people don't go to any other systems because they love how these shoot. So it's a double-edged sword because one, it's it takes a little bit more experience and training and actually, uh, say uh, dry fire practice and all the other stuff and technique to pro properly use these however once you get good at using this and you go back to the other systems and you have the like weird kind of triggers and stuff like that the strikers and they have the major take ups and the triggers and the different holds and the different angles on stuff like that for some reason you just shoot this better you know no don't be wrong there's people that can shoot any gun awesome like i said hey, there's people out there there's amazing marksmen all right they can pretty much take any single gun that's in front of them and freaking hit bullseyes uh there's a lot of people that are like that when it comes to the average dude like me or you know so i've been shooting for a long time so i don't know if you say quite average when it comes to shooting but i'm a little bit more of an intermediate more experienced shooter when it comes to that it's like when i've been using a one system that pretty much spoils me in my marksmanship the, the way how it works these all guns are inherently more accurate than the person behind it so when you usually mess up it's usually the person that messes it up but when i go from a 1911 and i switch back to something else for some reason, I just don't shoot those ones very good anymore. So a 1911 is kind of like a double-edged sword because you get so used to the way how it works and how it functions and you, you literally get spoiled at how accurate the damn thing is that when you go to something else, it's like learning a new system all over again. So I just want to throw out there. It's, it's kind of a fun thing. So as an instructor, I was kind of embarrassed this weekend, but at the same time, I was kind of proud of myself because as an instructor, I actually, these guys went from not knowing how to shoot whatsoever to be able to take my Glock 19 and freaking do major groups. You know, but me embarrassed because they outshot me with my own Glock. Anyway, guys, if you like this video, like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about me, guys, and remember it's our responsibility to take care of each other and protect each other. Peace.